Hi everyone, my name is Roosje de Graaf and I'm the current project intern of Deprem Projects. I want to welcome you back to another episode of our Soapbox Talk series. Uh, today we welcome Silke Iberhard. Uh, to give you a brief introduction, uh, Silke is a saxophonist, clarinetist and a composer based in Berlin and has dedicated herself to variations of jazz, improvised music since the uh, mid 90s. Together with musicians John Roder and Kay Lupke, she takes part in the Silker Ibahat Trio, whose concept album, The Being In, in 2017, received the German Records uh, Critics Prize. Her work as a performer is wide range, as she also focuses on improvised encounters in dance, theater, and visual arts. Silke not only works with it, uh, within many collective ensembles, uh, but also composes for uh, ensembles. So, hi Silke, thank you for uh, joining us from Germany today. Um, I'm from the Netherlands, so it's always nice to talk to neighbors. So, <laughs> nice to see you today. Uh, how are you doing? Hello, Rose. Do I spell your name right? Rose. Uh, it's perfect. It's uh, Rose. Rose or Roche, I don't uh, Ro care really. Ro okay, I maybe say, I say Rose, it's easier. Yes, of course. Yeah, nice. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm I'm doing pretty fine here. Uh, I, I live in Berlin, um, but I have just um, attended a very nice residency near Munich at the Starnberger See and with, with a nice view to the Alps. And I was uh, in a very silent environment. There were five other artists. It was not so silent, but um, compared to Berlin, when I go out now, I see so many people and... There must be such a change of scenery from Berlin to, to a very quiet place nearby Munich. Uh, I can... Uh, yeah, um, it, it's, it seems like a little culture shock. A culture <laughs> um, shock, oh, that's so funny. Yes, and it's funny because we are in the midst of a lockdown still, so it should go until March 8th, but they elongated it until the end of the month um, mm. so we don't have concerts and all that but uh, tomorrow i will have a live stream thing and that that is uh, these are the things that we are all doing right now that's so nice to know that you are still uh doing musical stuff uh that's good to hear because uh, yesterday i spoke to Nejalke from bulgaria and he told me that it is just nothingness for, for a musician there. And it's sad to hear because your livelihood also depends on it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, good to hear that you still like somehow, uh, maybe online. Um, so um, you're a well-practiced musician who has been active since the mid nineties, uh, I read. And reflecting back to the last decades, uh, which crucial moments in your musical career have been uh, very important and shaped you to the musician and composer and performer you are today. I was wondering what the highlights of your career were. Uh, were. So yeah. Oh wow, that uh, could be a long story. That's hard to <laughs> hard to decide. Uh, um, maybe let's say after directly after my studies at the Hochschule für Musik Hans Eisler in Berlin, I uh, ended that in 2000 um, I played directly my first big concert and that was at the Jazz Fest Berlin uh, that day uh, with Aki Takase and um, I worked with her for many years and so that was a very important um, um, duo, uh, different projects but also duo and of course the the whole work with my trio that goes also back to the 90s um i think that that shaped the music and listening to to the records especially to eric dolphy and um but you ask for milestones right um, yeah but this is also sounds yeah. like your first gig after graduating is i think something to, uh, yeah to remember always yes um, yes do you also notice because uh, oh sorry if uh, if i interrupt you oh no 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 i was just thinking what what could be there were so many 
great things like tours to Canada, to China, to Australia. You have been Chicago. everywhere. Oh, I, I was so lucky, but I mean, over the last 25 years, no? Mm -hmm. But I just realized I've been on every continent except Antarctica. So I read that. That's, yeah, so that's something. <laughs> do you think yeah. that is still uh, one of your uh, on your bucket list before you retire as a musician, if you ever will retire as a musician, uh, going to Antarctica and playing there. Oh, that, that would be that's great. Something. That's something, but uh, actually, I don't like the cold <laughs> so much. I mean, that well, cold. So <laughs> I think there are only a few days in the year you could enter that continent and. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. You need I, a bunch of clothes and some fires to do that. Well, be glad because um, I'm now in Huntley, it's a little town in Scotland, and the gas network is uh, out, so we oh. don't have the heating here. So <laughs> I'm a bit cold right now, but um, oh no! Yeah. But it wouldn't be that cold as in Antarctica. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's uh, not on <laughs> to answer that question. Yes. <laughs> So um, you are both a saxophonist and a clarinetist, and I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to instruments. I like listening to them, but I have no clue how they work. Um, are they both similar instruments, a clarinet and a saxophone, or is it something that musicians often combine playing together, uh, a saxophone or clarinet? Or... Um... That is a little bit um, comes from the old days, uh, like really 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, people would start on the clarinet and then uh, switch to the saxophone. And that comes also from the big band era and all that. In my case, it was, um, I started on the clarinet and I played in the South German folklore brass band like Polka and all that Bavarian folklore, and mm. um, and I loved the tone of the saxophone so much, so I, I switched to it. My father was conducting that band, so um, that's why I got into it. And <laughs> and then I did not know what jazz was at that time, but I thought mm -hmm. the tone of a saxophone means jazz, or it is it is jazz. And uh, to answer your question, the um, of course, they are instruments of their own rights. Every clarinet mm -hmm. is, it has different fingerings. It, it has totally different system. And the thing what they have together, it's the mouthpiece and, and the, the reed. So uh, at first it's easy to, to bring out a note of those instruments, but uh, you have another stream of air and oh, yeah. yeah, they were. Okay. So uh, that's, that's funny that idea. you, mm. uh, it's funny that you touch upon um, telling that your father directed a band because the next question I want to ask you is that you grew up in a very musical household. Um, so you were focusing first when you were young, I guess, on the German folklore. Um, can you more, t maybe tell me, you more, uh, tell me more about the musical aspect in your family while growing up and maybe the German music scene itself or music traditions, because to be fair, I only know German Schlager music and that's it for me. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, I'm not very yeah. fond of the Schlager music. It is nice when you have a drink or two, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when, when I grew up, the, the German Schlager music was big. Mm. Um, <laughs> my father, he also led a, uh, uh, a dance music band that played for weddings and other birthday parties and like a party band so they played schlager and <laughs> so that's that's the soundtrack of my youth oh i'm uh, so together. sorry oh no that's <laughs> that's fine that's fine um like james last and bert Kempfert and but also bonnie m and maybe some michael jackson if you get oh, to maybe while. when you're funky yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 so but that's not german schlager no um, um yeah that that 
I, I come from a little village and uh, there was no way to escape that music. You, it was just natural to do that. So you could even enter the music band or you could go and do sports. Oh, yeah, then oh, I will also choose the music band, I think, uh, <laughs> over the sports. Uh, oh, that's funny. Um, so you grew up in a town where you couldn't really escape the uh, slogger music. And now you're playing jazz and improvisations. There's a bit of a contrast, I think. Or um, is it a natural um, and, yeah, evolution, I think, of the a... <laughs> Natural development. Yeah. Um, yeah. I probably can't play Schlager today anymore or, or <laughs> folklore. I'm not sure in that serious way. Okay, so oh. you are sticking to jazz. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I also took a glimpse at your musical CV and I noticed that you have some artists in residence programs. You have done some artists in residence programs, such as in Munich. Mm -hmm. um, so not just only conventional musical projects. Uh, is your approach in a creative or a arts environment different from your approach in the musical musical circles? So yeah, that's well, what I was wondering. Um, um, yes, I mean you you have to deal with different parameters. For instance, if I work with dancers. I can't just focus on my playing and my notes. I mean, um, you, you are much more conscious about the room and maybe about movement and maybe moving yourself in the room. Um, and in, in those works, it's, it's very important to think about the, these aspects that you don't normally don't do so much if you are playing on a bandstand, you have your, you're centered on your spot where you stand and there's a microphone. Of course, the room is important. The audience is important and all that, but um, yeah. So that's pure improvisation when you, yeah. Um, um, for instance, when you play with a dancer, you have to work much more with space also. So that's, yeah. these yeah, are things are... I'll, I'll, I learned from other arts and that's, uh, that's really I, nice. I really love to do that. Mm. There's more of a, uh, more happening uh, to your feeling space-wise instead of being placed in a music circle and doing your part, there's more I don't know, how do you yeah. say more inputs uh, or and, more? Uh, it's, it's, it's different. It's, the performative aspect is bigger if you do stuff like okay. that. That's yeah. really nice to hear. Um, so um, yeah, besides being in many collective ensembles, you also focus on encounters in dance, theater and the visual arts, as you said. Um, since the cultural sector has been hit hard by the current pandemic, uh, a lot of the, uh, these collaborations or projects have had to put on hold, I assume. Um, how is the pandemic impacting both your career and your creative process of composing music? Um, actually, I'm composing more right now because I'm yes. not touring so much. Yes, uh, on the other hand, it's really hard to realize um, if you compose for 10 people, for instance, it's not so easy to find a space where they can rehearse all together. And, you know, it's, you have to deal with a lot of uh, bureaucratic and um, stuff. That's not the right word, organizatorical. It's, it's hard to put those projects uh, together and then to, to work it out in, in person. So that's um, what Graham did, that, that's very smart, for mm -hmm. instance. So that kind of work, um, uh, such works appear in, in those times when yeah. you can't do the one-to-one, -one, the, the present process. So yeah, uh, can you so, also yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, can you maybe also <laughs> explain, um, are there like steps undertaken by, for instance, record labels, um, music streaming platforms or other music industry entities um, to help musicians through this hard time? Um, are there any initiatives by those musical entities? So, <laughs> <laughs> by those musical entities? Um, the record labels are also struggling, mm -hmm. of course, and, yeah. and uh, producers, we are all in the same boat, I would say. So, um, yeah, foundations are helping and, um, and also the, the state of Germany and uh, the, the, the countries and the land of Berlin, the Senate. So we have um, mm, some stuff we can apply for and get, get help from. Well, yeah. That's good to hear that there's yeah. also um, support from the state. Um, mm. That's nice. <laughs> but, it's nice, but yeah. um, it's, a, it's, it's still also different. not, it's, it's, it's easy and you have to do a lot to, yeah, to get it and, and then you have to prove it at the end. Yeah, it's, and to read all oh, the small letters while you were doing it. Yeah, yeah, and it takes <laughs> takes actually a lot of energy. I, I would have, um, I would love if um, they would just give a monthly salary to every artist. It would do less bu bureaucracy and, yeah. uh, and cost can, not that many costs. It's so complicated. And, um, and, you, and you need to be very uh, detailed, I think, with everything you do and explain everything and why and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also the model of a, a musician is not uh, one musician is teaching and doing theater work and mm -hmm. performing live the next is a composer so every musician's life is so different yeah. and 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 that is what uh politics sometimes don't understand yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they don't see that i think yeah no. and um mm. well yeah I'm sorry, uh, I really hope that in the nearby future, everything will be back in nor uh, to normal. Yeah. Um, and the same goes uh, with your traveling, because I heard you have been to every continent as except for Antarctica. Um, so <laughs> with, your, <laughs> with your music, you uh, spent so much time on the roads, uh, be it for gigs or collaborations with other international artists. Um, not being able to play music together with other musicians and not having a physical live audience to play for. Um, as I think that the feeling of a shared experience also must have been diminished or yeah, uh, must be gone. Um, are there ways in which you try to capture or rekind rekindle this kind of shared feeling between musicians and the musician and the, and the audience? Um, yeah, that's, it really, um, it's really hard to, we are thrown in, in a different life. Now everything is happening online. We are not seeing our friends and musician colleagues and not the audience and all that. And um, it's so important to try not to lose um, the feeling about it mm. and it's very funny when when I had the live streaming concert last month I was it was like after two months my first thing and when we just did it felt just so good to 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 be on on track again and to to do what we do and and i think if you if you don't do it we we, we lose we lose that feeling and, uh, and of of closeness and and that also makes it's it's also not so easy to play with two meter distance and if it's a large band maybe the even if you have monitors it changes the music it, it's all mm -hmm. The drama is six meters away and yeah and i think uh what mu make music so um beautiful um is that you also uh, you are in a dialogue with the musicians surrounding you 
and you respond to each other in such a direct way via music and tunes and notes and now it's like a big distance maybe via zoom or a physical this distance mm. it must be so weird to be in this position for almost a year now um absolutely and but the strange thing is um one zoom concert with a friend in korea and this that was the first time in november with yujin sung she plays the gayagum and uh she just left back and, and we I haven't seen her for, for yeah two weeks and then we did that and with the headphones on and everything I felt so close that was unbelievable and but when I listened yeah. back that's crazy and and of course it would be so much better in the room but I think um, because we know each other it makes it easier and yeah. also we we know how to dive into the music, but it's it's hard to explain. Um, and I, I look forward yeah. to every rehearsal in person we have. And if it's only two or three I, people with a little distance and- Yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, so you have been invited to participate in Ensemble Europa. Um, and um, yeah, which is a project that record an album while being physically apart from each other. Um, and you also tell me that you are doing live streams with musicians from North Korea. Um, uh, and South Aubrey Korea. Oh, South Korea. Sorry, South Korea. Yeah. <laughs> Will be interesting if North Korea is also joining. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> a lot of other artists are also doing them. Um, so you also say that it felt very nice to perform with the a musician from South Korea. Uh, are, what are for you the biggest challenges doing it via a live stream? Um, or maybe also what are the great benefits you can be with a musician from North, uh, South Korea while <laughs> <laughs> being online? Um, the challenge uh, um, is of course the latency you know, um, when I play a note, she hears that on a different time slot and you can't play really things in time and her reality is different to mine. When I played, I just reacted to what she did or backwards. So yeah. I felt totally fine. And when I listened back to it, I also, but then I saw the picture and I saw, um, it, it was um, someone was um, no, there was a post production after that. Mm -hmm. So um, my sound was put on my hand and her sound on hers. And so that the music went apart. It was still, <laughs> you don't hear it, but if you know it, and it, it was maybe a little different than I, than I heard it, so. Uh, was so. it also, <laughs> was it also kind of a bit of funny to hear it back? Uh, you have the ear for it, so you know how it normally sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for me, it's like, oh, I don't hear a difference, but did you have to kickle when you hear it back? Um, I only, uh, yes, a little bit, because it's, it's okay, that, that happens, that what, that is what the pandemic does to the music and uh yeah. yeah and we had two screens and the thing was um i was pushing something on my mm, on my computer a button to make it louder on my headphone mm -hmm. and then i saw the the arm in germany and then i saw her picture like a little later and my arm was coming on her side again <laughs> It's hard to explain, but it was so spooky. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I think I'm really curious when hopefully the pandemic is over, what kind of things we will see from all the projects, art projects, mm -hmm. maybe mus a musical or theater, or I have a friend who is doing um, sports fighting via Zoom. I'm so amazed to look back on everything uh, and how... Uh, how it uh, worked out 
the outcome mm -hmm. but still amazing that we still can communicate with each other uh, via a digital platform um, imagining doing it via a letter writing <laughs> um, so um, <laughs> Elizabeth Russo and Graham, uh, Graham Stevens uh, the, mus uh, the musicians behind Ensemble Europa wrote the album in, in keeping with the styles of the music musicians involved uh, how did you as a composer and musician look uh, at the musical score. Um, can you maybe also draw on the progress from receiving the musical score to eventually recording and playing your specific musical part? Mm -hmm. um, so it was uh, Graham, he was sending me um, a track, I think four tracks, and he sent me the music. It was written out and some notes maybe uh, um, performance notes, no? what to do on what part and what, yeah, how to deal with it. And we talked about it, we assume. <laughs> and um, yeah, and what I got was, um, there was the guitar and vocalist and a vi viola part. And of course, I know Graham, we have worked together some time ago, maybe let's say 12 or 15 years, I am not sure, but it's really, oh, he knows better. I, I don't wanna be wrong, but it's more than 10 years for sure. And um, I really enjoyed it uh, when I had had it on the guitar on, on the headphones and, and the music is beautiful. It's so, um, as, as I, I know him and I know his music and it's um, very true, very true music. God. Yes. That's nice to hear. So uh, you heard Graham's, his guitar part also, or? Yes. So there was Graham's guitar part, the viola and a singer. Uh, so okay. I, I don't know the people. That was Lisabeth. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah, and the viola. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Lis Lisbeth. Lisbeth yes. is the singer, and I think the viola player is Una Vagil from the Netherlands. Ah, um, so that's so beautiful. nice. Because you beautiful. Yeah. I so much enjoyed that. And and that day I was still at the Villa Valberta in, in this beautiful environment, and I had a big sala where I played to it and um, looked to the mountains, and, and I really it was so nice to do it and oh, that's so nice um, to hear because mm -hmm. um while you're all apart from each other um there is still a kind of creative connection because you love the viola player by but you didn't knew the musician yet maybe you will meet him in the future but um and also that you were in the mountains area while graham and elizabeth were in scotland in huntley the town i live in currently and Una was in the Netherlands. I don't know where in the Netherlands specific, but that you all had a different scenery uh, mm. surround you, but still participating in one musical project. That's really amazing um, to hear. Um, so uh, you told me that you're not very good with cables just oh, yeah. uh, before the interview started. So uh, where did you record your musical score? Just in your... Uh, house in Berlin um, did you um, do you have the means back home for recording things yourself or is something you uh, or was it something you had to adapt to with COVID um, it was I have to admit I did that kind of work like being my own sound engineer and producer or what however you call that <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the first time um, I had great help from my partner Nikolaus Neuser, the trumpet player, he was with me mm -hmm. in the residency. He brought his microphone and he gave me his computer where the logic program is on. And then he showed me how to press the button for record and for stop. And so I got a little bit, I, I um, developed some skills thanks to him. Oh, <laughs> thanks that's to so him. good to hear. <laughs> So, but because yeah. everyone creates new hobbies and skills during COVID, mm. uh, mine is maybe baking, but you can produce now. 
<laughs> I wouldn't say can, but um, I, I, more I, than I do. More, th but more than before, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and also it's very useful to have like a big network of musicians around you that uh, do are able to help you. So mm. nice uh, to hear that you uh, require new skills during this <laughs> lockdown. Um, so uh, usually, while collaborating in a music project, the musicians involved would have a much clearer idea of the final outcome uh, because playing music together everyone is in a way controlling and designing the end product however this musical project uh, ensemble Europa seems to take a lot of control away from the individual musicians uh, except for Elizabeth and Graham who are uh, will who will bring it all together um, is that concerning or is it something that you fully embrace or do you still want to have like a bit more knowledge about the uh, final outcome? Um, actually, I, I'm, I, I still don't know who, who will play, who are the other members of the ensemble. And I have never worked like this before. It's so funny for me, Yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm open to this. Uh, uh, way of working <laughs> and uh, looking forward to meet or maybe uh, play together then on this online on this planned online performance that's um, so funny because yeah. um, you already heard uh, some parts i also did hear some parts i heard the the kafal player for instance mm -hmm. and i know the names of the other musicians involved so somehow I do have a bit more knowledge than you when it comes to the practical or the names of the musicians involved, but you know more about the music itself. So uh, it's interesting how it all will come together at the end. You probably mo know much more than I. I even don't know how many people and what instruments. So uh, I think, yeah, I was the third to play on this. So for, for me now yeah, it's true. a trio, but it might be a big band at the end who knows what what graham does <laughs> maybe i can send you a link uh afterwards and you can see yes. the other na the names of the other musicians and stalk them okay. online if you want to <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so uh, i ask this question because i wonder if there is still the same kind of an artistic trust between musicians while working remotely than there is when you create music together in one space do you trust mm. them? <laughs> I, yes, um, yes, I do. I mean, what I heard was beautifully, and I know Graham and I, I just hear from you, Lisa, but she's also, a, a, she is the, the co-producer um, of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know her, but um, she, I think they know what they do and it will be great at the end. Yes, I'm so curious. Uh, I'm also mm. very eager to hear uh, your part because yeah. I also didn't hear your part. Um, so yeah, let's hope that it's beautiful. I I'm sure it is. Um, so uh, a lot of the music written, uh, written for Ensemble Europa has been inspired by the landscape and life in, in and around Huntley um, in Scotland here. So the town I live in and Jess lives in and Graeme and Stephen are residencies are uh, so I was wondering, do you feel like you are learning about a town that you have never seen and maybe heard of before uh, while you saw the compositions that Elizabeth and Graham gave you? Um, Hartley is the name of the town, is that? Yeah, Huntley. It's a small... Oh, Hun um, Huntley, Huntley. Yeah, Huntley. I, I'm so sorry, I have never heard of it. It's small, no, isn't it? I, <laughs> I also never heard uh, of it before I came here, to be honest. But okay, okay. I was wondering if you have like a kind of uh, Im uh, imagination of the, how the town must be while you hear the music. Um, mm. I asked the same question uh, to Nejalko, and he, he talked more about the video game, that it, it reminds him of a video game. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering what you uh, thought of. Did you have a clear I, picture of the town? I, th I imagine it's in the highlands. It's 
it's nearby the Cairngorms. Do you know that? It is very not near the Highlands, I think. I think maybe um, I will ask that. Oh my God, I don't even know. Okay, but it's north from Edinburgh. Uh, it is north. in Aber It is in Aberdeenshire. Um, ah, I know that. I've been to Aberdeen. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, you've been to Aberdeen. Oh yes, we, with Graham we played in the Blue Lamp. Oh, I didn't, at the blue, I didn't know at the that. Blue Lamp. Yes. I'm going to write it down now. At the Blue Lamp, we had a great tour through Scotland. I think it was ten concerts. Yes. Ten concerts in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. That and, was uh, it was all in Aberdeen, but. In, in also in Glasgow, in Edinburgh, in Newcastle. Um, okay. Yeah, so 15 you, years ago. And that was with, with this trio Nude. That's so amazing that you, yes. uh, you, you saw Graham also the last time physically then uh, 15 years ago or yeah, 10 years ago. Probably, probably. And still you have like doing a project together. It's amazing mm -hmm. how long um, such a working relation uh, yeah, consists. Yeah, it's, it's nice. really nice mm -hmm. to hear. Um, so, Ensemble Europa strives to foster global connection through music and encourages new creative relations. Do you think that this way of rem um, of remotely making music together will have a major influence on the way musicians perform with each other in the post-corona era? Hmm. Good question. I have haven't thought about that yet. Um, maybe we are on the path of digitalization that it might be easier to do because we haven't done that before. We develop new skills. And um, so maybe there will be some projects happening like this after as well. On the other hand, I think everyone will be so happy to play real concerts. Yeah. And as an um, audience, I also would love to see. Absolutely. You but maybe there's also a the younger generation of musicians that they grow naturally in that into that and they are more used to it and they will mm -hmm. um, do that for longer. Yeah. Who knows? Only time will tell. Um, yes. Are you also excited to see a live audience again? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> because how, uh, I don't know how it works when you're doing a live stream, because when you're playing in, uh, in a concert hall, for instance, you can see and hear and feel the, responsive, uh, the responses from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, do you also have the same vibe when it's via a live stream, do you notice that they are enjoying it here in it via di uh, a digital platform or how is the engagement with the audience? Um, it's different. And of course, there is no applause when the music is over. That's always so surprising <laughs> and because when you play, sometimes you forget it. You, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's for real. You play. OK, it's for the camera and there are people but we don't know who we know um, maybe okay this and this friend is watching but there might be someone we don't see uh, so yeah that's, 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 that must be that must be weird i think <laughs> like yeah. doing a major beautiful musical song and then there's silence afterwards instead it's, of yeah it is ah. and um yeah recently okay we have Usually we have some people like the technicians and the promoter sitting in the room, like five people or so. And they will do this then. They afterwards. do the clapping and <laughs> and uh, I got used to that as those people like the audience, um, the live audience. And of course there is the, the real audience. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just Let's try go back to, to normal. Imagine, soon. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, finally, uh, I always ask each musician in these talks at the end if they could recommend a song or a piece of music or an album to me, to the town Huntley and to the audience listening right now. Um, so 
Do you have any recommendations of music that I should listen as soon as our conversation is over? Okay, that can be a classic also. Yeah, everything, I don't, everything. you can. Um, yeah. All time favorite uh, is Eric Dolphy out to lunch on Blue Note records. Oh, on Blue Note, can it's you maybe the, also from the 60s. type it? Mm -hmm. From the 60s, it's before my time. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I'm very, yeah. I'm very eager to listen to it. Can you maybe also um, mm -hmm. write it down in the chat so I can I do. make a note of it? I don't want to. To lunch. <laughs> I think, yeah. Ah, thank you, Eric Dolphy. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, I'm going to listen to it this weekend. It's a perfect, uh, it's a nice tune for a morning breakfast on Sunday. Or not? Yes, why not? <laughs> okay. okay, then yeah. I will plan it in then. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, uh, we have come to the end. Uh, thank you so much, Silke, uh, for sharing all your experience about your career, uh, your thoughts and the creation of Ensemble Europa. Uh, I sincerely hope that I will maybe in the future go to Germany or you go to the Netherlands and see you perform live uh, instead of this Zoom conversation. Um, I also want to thank the audience uh, for listening to this soapbox talk and I hope that you all are doing fine uh, given the current circumstances. Um, a lot of good vibes and wishes from Huntley Scotland to all of you. Um, yeah, thank you. Danke. Thank you, Rose. Danke, Danke, Danke schön. <laughs>